can't be here right now. Okay, so today I have one little thing that I wanted to go over with you that is the only little piece of new information. Um, Shasta College has this list of things that they want to do, and honestly, some of those things to me don't seem like they fit particularly well. And this is one of those things. Did you guys study uh, matrices last year a little bit? Do you guys remember doing a little bit with matrices? You know what? We are going to do literally matrices for about 20 minutes right now, and this will be the only time we touch matrices all year, which doesn't make sense, but Shasta College puts it on the syllabus. They say, you got to do this, so we're in. We're going to do it because we want to get our credits and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to take a look at that, and uh, it's something kind of different. So, uh, last year, I know you guys did this, and so I'm going to ask you to look at something but not write it down because it would be a colossal waste of your time to do all of this, but I do want you to know where you're coming from and where we're going to, if I could find it. Okay, so, long ago, there was this dude named Gauss, true story. And Gauss, again, you do not need to actually do this yourself, I just wanna kind of let you follow along for a moment. And I'm going to show us to do, we're going to do this all with technology. So if you just watch, there's going to be, you're going to be, need to be able to do line one and line like 12. And you're going to let the calculator do all that work in the middle for us, okay? So you guys are familiar with doing a problem like that before, right? I know you did those back in algebra two. Do you guys remember how long it took you to do those? It sucked, right? So this guy named Gauss, he figured out that it would actually be very, very convenient to instead of writing all of that stuff out, he decided to organize all the X's in one column, all the Y's. So see that negative one? What does that really mean? That means negative one Z. What is that four right there? That's four. And so by organizing it, the variables became unnecessary to write. Did that save a little bit of time? Sure. And so just like what we have done before when we did elimination, we tried to make variables go away. So what Gauss did is he said, you know what? If I multiply this top row by negative one and add down, what would happen to these two twos? If I multiply by negative one and add down, this two would become a zero. And then maybe if I multiply this one by, oh gosh, negative one and add down, this one by negative two and add it to that one, it would be zero. And he did something like this. And so notice what happened to my X components. You should recognize this. You did this last year. It's called the Gauss-Jordan method, which you probably didn't call it that, but that's technically what it's called because Gauss is the guy that did it. And he went down through this process and then he decided, okay, now I'm going to get rid of that one. And then I'm gonna divide and I got that. So what happened when you got to this stage right now? Because remember, these are the X's, the Y's, and the Z's. So what does it say right here? Is that one Z is three. Yay, we got an answer, right? But was that a lot of work? And then he went ahead and he used that one, that one right there to get rid of that two right there. And all of a sudden he hit right here and all of a sudden divide by four and we have that one Y is equal to negative two, you see it? How that kind of plays out. And through more and more and more and more work, eventually got all the way down to here, where there's a one, zero, 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 one, zero. This is called the identity matrix. What does that say that that one what? One X is two. And that one Y is negative two. And that one Z is three. And there's my X, Y, Z. Do you guys want to relive that little piece of Algebra 2? I don't think you do, because I don't want to relive it either. So what we're going to do is we're going to know that this, that's great, but with calculators, we have the ability to do it slightly differently. So if you do not have in your possession a graphing calculator, change that. See the black bag back there? Grab one of my graphing calculators. I will have to sanitize them when you're done and it's all good. So they're gonna go up front in my room as soon as you're done, because I'm gonna have to wipe them down. So if you don't have a grapher, grab one. <clears throat> so 
So for you guys, if you do not have one, you can download one on your calculator or you could potentially also um, go online and just look up a matrix calculator and I'll show you exactly what I want you to do, okay? But it'd be really helpful to get a graphing calculator. All right. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call this row. You better write this down. We are only gonna do this one day and only one day. It will show up on the next test. You will, some of you will go, oh, I remember that was really easy and I don't remember how to do it anymore. <laughs> Make a note, because this is the easiest problem on the test by a mile. It's just you gotta remember how to hit the buttons and on a test I can't come and tell you how to do that because that's your job. It's called row reduced echelon form. This is row reduced echelon form, which is a big fancy thing of saying, hey, calculator, please do that for me. And so there's a cool way to start this problem that I'm gonna take you through. All right, 2x plus 6y equals negative 12. All right, now, first step, I wanna write that as a matrix. So can anybody tell me how to translate that from an algebraic looking thing to a matrix? Yes, Gabe. No, just on here, on paper. How would I write it down? What's it? Four? And what? Neg sure, four, negative three, five, two, six. Okay. This known as the augmented matrix. Sorry, there's a little vocab involved in this. If you write it in that form, that is known as the augmented matrix. We have done the hardest part of this. Now let's go to our calculator. Time to hit buttons. You've done this before, I know you have. So the first thing I need to do is get the matrix into my calculator. So matrix is found right above the X to the minus one button right here on the side. So I hit second and X to the minus one. And what I need to do is I need to edit that matrix. I need to edit it because it doesn't know what my matrix is yet. Now, Any of you ever had RC Cola before? Guess familiar with RC Cola? This is so funny how history does this to people. RC Cola was the biggest cola in the world. In fact, they were the first ones to come up with cane sugar instead of using some of this, you know, like you have this, that special syrup that we use now that high fructose stuff, they were the first ones to figure it out. They were, they had a chemist that did it. And they had a chemist that they employed who, well, maybe he wasn't the nicest of guys because he went ahead and let Coke hide away because Coke was willing to pay him more money than RC would. And so they stole this completely corporate espionage. They stole the formula to do it. And now they're the ones that have it and they blew up an RC Cola, kind of still exists, but it's really small. It almost doesn't exist, but I bring it up because how many rows does this problem have? Two, and how many columns does it have? So what we wanna do is we wanna tell it we have two rows, we have three columns, my values are four, negative three and five, two, six, and negative 12, okay? So step one, you gotta get the data into the calculator, cool? Now that we're there, we quit. You gotta get to your home screen because now I wanna do something with that, right? So I go back to matrix, and where do you think the do something is? Math. Now, now, there's many ways to do this. I don't know why Shasta College thinks this is the way they want you to know, but it is, so whatever. 
we're going to go way down. And the fact that you have to go so far down tells you that most people don't think this is the best way to do it, but okay. We go down, 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 all the way to letter B. I mean, it's so far down, they ran out of numbers. And it's the row reduced echelon form, R, R, E, F. But what do I want to have the row reduced echelon form of is matrix A. So where's matrix A? Matrix A, one. And when I hit enter, boom, there is all of that work from A to Z that I gave you on the paper. They did all of it for me. You see that? So when I do that and I write that down, it looks like this. One. Zero, zero, one. You see that? See that one, zero, zero? Why is there a one there? Because it stands for one X and, what's that say? One X and no Y, so that means X is that number. No X's and one Y, so Y is that number. But that's a bad number. You guys think we could probably do better than writing a stupid decimal down? So if you hit math, enter, enter, if you ever get crazy decimals, math, enter, enter, and it'll say, oh, we got negative one fifth, and we got negative 29 fifteenths. So that means I've got these two lines that cross at that point, and so my solution is right there. Isn't that pretty cool? It did all the work for you. So on the test, what's gonna happen is I'm going to ask you to write the augmented matrix and the row reduced echelon form with your answer. Those three things. All you have to do is write those three things down. So you do one on your own. You guys have negative two X minus two Y equals seven, and you have negative X minus four Y equals 12. And let's see if you guys can do that. I was double checking that I was still recording and I am, which is good. Okay, so for my distance learning people, what I have for you guys is in Google Classroom, there's something that says row reduced echelon form. That's where you're gonna find the sample problems that you're gonna do for homework. You can print it and write on it, or you can just write those, those, those values out on a separate piece of paper, or take a picture and, and upload it. Um, eventually, I'm gonna leave that up to you. If you decide later on that you would rather put your work together as a packet and turn that packet into the school and, and that that would be an easier way, if you have a way to transport that information here, we can work on doing that because uh, sometimes it's really hard to upload photographs of work and sometimes it just doesn't work easily, okay? Yeah, it's really weird that's not for us, right? I'm so conditioned, I'm like a Pavlov's dog, like, ooh, it's over. Okay, so yeah, but it's not. Okay, uh, Abby, what did you put across here? What is this right here? Okay, so what did you just find is that X is 
Negative two thirds, right? Good. All right, Christina, what'd you come up with down here? Okay. Oh, yeah, well, you had a zero here, didn't you? And a one there, and then this one was something. How, how, help out. What, how do we get it to be a fraction? You have math and enter twice. Did anybody do that? What'd you get? Wait, what'd you get? I got negative 17 over 6, too. Okay, I got negative 17 over 6. That looks like pi. Sorry about that. Negative 17 over 6 goes there. So what do we call this kind right? I'm going to move this up so you can't see my writing. What is that called? That's called an, uh-uh. That one is called an augmented matrix. And that one is called row reduced echelon form. Isn't that fancy? It sounds all fancy. You can go home and tell your parents you learned all about row reduced echelon form, and they will be impressed even though you know it's like. Okay? All right. So. Let me try one more. I actually have two more on the docket today. There's a reason for both of those. Here's the first one. Oh my gosh. Augmented matrix, this is a joke. This is so easy. That's why nobody remembers it on the test because it's been, you know, we don't spend days and days on it because it's too easy. See if you guys can solve that. Still another little three by two, so. See if you could pop that into your little machine and come up with an answer because something different happens this time. Absolutely. I like it. I Kaylee gave me a weird, a weird look, and that's what I was shooting for. Did anybody see something strange happen? Because when I did it, I got this. This says, look at the bottom. It says no x's and no y's is 1. It's saying 0 plus 0 is 1, isn't it? What does that mean? That means there's no solution. See, the rope, this thing, what should this be right here is it should be all zeros except for ones going down the diagonal for an x, a y, and a z. What does this tell me? It just disappeared. How is it possible this has no solution? Those lines were, those lines were parallel. Ugh. So I would go ahead and write it, you know, because I tried. And I just say no solution that cannot exist so what you're looking for did you guys talk about the identity matrix last year some of you probably did and some of you didn't but what an identity matrix is is it's always a square thing like two by two three by three where there's ones down the diagonal and everything else is zeros that's called the identity matrix and if you don't get that you're screwed you can't do it so the last question is this one right here. And there's a reason I'm asking it, because it pops up on the test. By the way, you know, I, I make a lot of reference to that because it's probably what you care about since it's most of your grade. But I changed the world a little teeny bit. And I did something here on the next line that worries me. Because every year I have students screw this up. I'll see if you can think about what I just did that would screw it up. I have no x value in that last one. So when I go and I make my augmented matrix, what 
what am I going, in fact, write on the last line of my augmented matrix? Be careful. It's going to be 0, 1, 2. What if y was the one that was missing and there was no y? Then the 0 would be in the middle, right? Because remember, what are all of these? X, Y, Z. So make sure you line it up. Now, what's the difference when you type this into your calculator this time? What makes this a little bit different? How many rows and columns do you have? Rows is three, columns four. But once you put it in, R, R, E, F, that matrix A and you're golden. So, and remember, how do you make a fraction? You got it, do that. Okay, try to see if you can make that happen. This one will come out nice with a nice little identity matrix coming on here. And let's see if we could find out what it is. Somebody could pop a hand up if you think you got an answer here for the first X. Even somebody at home can do that. If anybody thinks you can tell me what that X value is from your matrix. That is a fantastic answer. By the way, what happens if you type one of those numbers in wrong into your calculator? You're screwed. <laughs> On the test, if you type in one of those things wrong, there's no way for me to know that it was just, a, just a, like a mistake on your calculator. It sucks. Um, please look at it like three or four times and make sure you go line by line and make sure you put it in. It's a super easy question, but it would suck to miss it because you just typed wrong. Anybody different get me the Y value? I didn't get negative 11 six. I have a negative 11 thirds for the X. I got negative 22 ninths, good. And last but not least, Z. It's good. Yeah, good. So, negative 5 18 it is. There you go. So, little question. Do you guys even know what this means? This is two lines that cross at that point. What is this? It's not three lines. It's three planes. It's three planes. So imagine the back of my room is a wall. It's like a plane, isn't it? If I open the door and, and held it open, is that a plane too? So let's say I have the, the back of my room, the door is open. Where does the door, the plane that is the door, meet the plane that's the wall if I have it open? It's the hint, right? And then I have another plane that's cutting through at some other angle and it hits at one point. So what you actually have is three intersecting planes. That's kind of weird. How often do you think three planes intersect perfectly at one point? Most of those have no solution unless you're really careful and rig the problem very carefully because usually they just don't work perfectly. They somehow like miss and create a little triangular shape in the middle. It's very rare for them to do that. So it's very easy to get a no solution on the three by three, okay? And bigger gets harder. Okay, why don't you guys try a couple of those? Because you have a worksheet there. I have you do a couple. So why don't you pop through a couple on the front, a couple on the back, make sure it works. Look for something that's weird on it that maybe is missing a letter. I wish there was one. 
I lied, there aren't any that are missing any letters. But you might think that 14 is hard because there's fractions, but see if you can do that, you know? Go through a couple, we'll spend a few minutes on that. And uh, and what you have in front of you is the homework. So whatever you don't get done, that's all of the homework that you have tonight is just to finish a couple of those. For this one? See, yeah, you might want to go through each of your indices because I actually rigged it all up in advance. So I knew what the answer was going to be and I checked it myself. So go through line by line because you probably just have one number that's off like a plus or minus sign of a thing. Oh, yeah. See, that looks like an eight the way I wrote it. It's a six. And that might have been what got you. Okay, so... I'm going to walk around and help people for a few minutes and talk to some people, and then I'll be back in a few, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop that a little bit, and I have the last little thing that I wanted to do with you guys today. Now, here's the good news. I have no additional homework for you, okay? So your homework tonight is I want you to make sure your prereqs one, two, and three are done, right? What else do we have? It's systems of equations and RREF. Those five things, that's what I have out. By the way, how long should it take you to finish that assignment? Oh, by the way, if you don't have a graphing calculator, it kind of sucks. But there are some nice ones online that you can utilize to do some of that stuff, some, some matrix calculators. So here's the deal. I, I have something that I really need to go over with you, but I decided I'm not going to give you an additional assignment on it. I just want to make sure we talk about it, and that's how to deal with exponent rules. You guys have done exponents a lot. I know you have, but I want to make sure everybody knows what the rules are, because when you come in here tomorrow, and that's for you guys online as well, I have what is called the Equation Inequality Challenge, and I'm going to give you guys a group kind of a quiz where you're going to be able to work with your partner and I'm going to walk around and I'm going to have a little stamp. I'm going to work on how to do this for you guys online. But if you're good, I'm going to put a stamp on the ones that I like and I'm going to smile. Well, that's hard. I can't smile. Anyway, I'm going to basically say, you know, if I stamp one, two, and four and you're like, well, what about number three? I'm just going to wave at you and walk on. What does that mean? Something's wrong with number three. It's my walk of shame. It's the bad problems that people have historically just chowed on in this class. And so you and your partners can argue and figure out what did we do wrong and try to fix it. And sometimes if you're like, come right back, come right back. I'm like, no, I'm helping other people. I'll get there eventually. You'll leave that question, go on to other ones. But by the time you leave, hopefully we'll have all of them right and you'll know what's because this is problems that people have historically hurt themselves on on exams. I want to know what they are. And exponent is one of those things that gets people. So as a quick little reminder, so I'm going to start super easy, and then I'm going to make it a, a little more obnoxious to, to, to demonstrate my points. What's the rule if you multiply things with the same base? You add the exponents. Exactly right. That's not a big deal. The second rule, how about x to the ninth over x to the 13th? What is the rule when you divide two things that have the same base? You subtract. Well, that would mean that it's x to the minus 4, isn't it? You guys like that? I don't like that either. In fact, most math people say that's bad. You don't do that. In fact, the only time we like negative exponents is scientific notation, and that's just like lame. That's not even a math class, okay? So anybody remember how else you would have been told to do that? Move it to the bottom. Yeah, okay, so that's really important. Number one, a rule is if you multiply, you add, if you divide, you subtract, but if you ever see a negative exponent, it's a net, it, it tells you to take a reciprocal. That's what it says, okay? How about number three? X to the fourth to the seventh. Powers of powers. That's X to the fourth, X to the fourth, X to the fourth, X to the fourth. Oh my gosh, lots of X to the fourth. So that's X to the 28. You guys got that down? Not too bad. Okay, now 
that's fine. So now let's actually talk about the real stuff. I just kind of went for it. Oh my gosh, look at all that stuff. Wow, if somebody asked me to simplify that, I got three X to the sixth Y squared. I got an eight X to the seventh Y. I've got a four X Y to the fifth. Now, I know what a lot of you probably want to do. Anybody want to start cross canceling in here? What I've seen is when people start cross canceling in big problems like this, it ends up looking like a bloodbath from like uh, forensic files. And then by the time you're done, you don't even know what you crossed out and what you left. So probably the smarter play Do you guys follow what I just did? Three times eight is 24, six of those, seven of those, two of those, one of those. Isn't that easy? It didn't take me very long, did it? What's the bottom then? Forty x squared, y to the fifteenth. Okay, I'm not done, but at least I've set the table, and it's now an easier problem, isn't it? So, what would you guys do from that phase of my story? I eat my candy first. I go to the easy stuff. Look at x. How many x's should I have? Thirteen on top, two on the bottom. What's left? Eleven. Where? Why? Because there's more of them, right? You start canceling them out, and how many y's should there be? Three on top, 15 on the bottom. What's that? 12 on the bottom. There's more of those in the bottom, no big deal. And then 24 over 40, those are both divisible by something kind of nice. They're both divisible by eight. Can we handle that? People screw that up every year on the test. They just do. If an exponent shows up, they're like, do something dumb. Because people start doing that, they're like, well, this one cancels that one to leave four of those, and four of those cancel that one to leave two of those, and that one and this one makes 12 of those. You see how that could look like a forensic file show? And then you get all confused. It's smarter to go over here. All right, how about this dude? We're just gonna do a couple of these. By the way, is there any homework on this? No, I just wanna make sure you know what you're doing, okay? 21. 28s, x to the sixth, y squared, x, y to the minus four. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Cube. A lot of people don't like negative exponents, they scare them. All right, anybody notice something happy that I could do early, early in my problem? Did you notice anything here? Three quarters. That was easy. Okay, how about X? Tell me something about X. I got six X's on the top. What do I got in the bottom? So how many X's? Five, cool. How about Y? Careful about this because that goes to this rule that we had up here. This y to the minus four means those four y's really, where do they belong? They're in the wrong place. They should be on top. So the two up here with those four make how many? Six where? Okay, and then what was the rule that we said about powers of powers? They multiplied, so that would be x to the 15th and y to the 18th, right? That's the easy part of the problem. Oh man, what's three to the third? It ain't nine, it's 27. How about four to the third? 64. So 
what I'm saying is, you know, a lot of you have learned little strategies to do. Just be really careful to use the one that works the best for you. I just want to remind you of those. And the last one, and this ends the day for me, this is all I wanted to do. Clean up, you know what homework you got, talk about this. I normally give an assignment that has a few on it, but I cut that out to just try to give you a little bit less work. Um, this one really worries me though. I feel like I'm being really obnoxious with that problem, probably because I am, but you know, it is what it is. This one right here is the one where most people just cry mercy and they just give up on the problem. See it every year. They're like, I, I got nothing. Up here, at least I could clean it up first and then I got something. This one is weird because there's all these different things, but it's no big deal. Check out X. Let's go first, easy stuff. What's gonna happen to X, everybody? Powers of powers do what? Multiply, right? So what is negative two times negative two? Oh, no big deal. Cool. What about y? Y to the negative eight. Why did I do that? Because a negative exponent is by definition a Reciprocal, and here's the one that blows people's mind. What is negative three squared? That blows people's mind. That still says three squared, but it says square it and flip it over. How about down here? What about two to the third? Eight. How about X here? Now, it's negative 12, but we're pointing to the bottom, so what do we do? Put it up. And how about y? Okay, now let's see, can we finish our story? How many x's are there now that we've kind of like, like blown it up a little bit? How many x's do you guys see? 16 where? Yeah. How many y's? And I'm looking at a 72. On a test, my experience is this problem would be missed by probably 85% of people that do it the first time. And it's just, I, I wanted to talk about it. I don't want to beat you guys up on that, but the, those kind of strange problems, just remember your rules and be a little bit meticulous and short. So I hope today was a little easier. I, I, I packed a little bit less in. I'm giving you very little homework today formally. And um, what I'm going to say is starting very, very soon,